untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white landfall deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Kodama of the West Tree, a 3-3 legendary spirit from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, has reach and says modified creatures we control have trample, and whenever a modified creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So Kodama has excellent synergy with our fearless fledgling, a 2-mana 1-1 one -one that with Landfall picks up a plus one plus one counter, which counts as a modification for Kodama, and it also gains flying until end of turn. So turn two we can play a Fledgling, turn three play land for the turn, triggering Landfall, can play Kodama, Fledgling hits the opponent for two, triggering Kodama, letting us search up another land, which will trigger Landfall once again, growing the Fledgling, and helping us ramp. Then at 4 mana, another great card with Kodama is Felidar Retreat, an enchantment that with Landfall can either make 2-2 white cat beast creature tokens, or can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain vigilance until end of turn, so another way to modify all our creatures. And the Wandering Emperor is next. The 4 mana Planeswalker can be flashed in and activated the turn we play her to put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. It also gains first strike until end of turn, so another way to modify our creatures at instant speed. The minus one makes a 2-2 Samurai token with Vigilance, and the minus two can exile target tapped creature and gain two life, giving our deck some much needed removal. And then we also have two copies of the Dawn Sky at 5 mana. The 5-4 Legendary Dragon Spirit has Flying and Vigilance, and when the Dawn Sky dies, we can either look at the top 7 cards of our library, putting any number of non-land permanent cards with total mana value 4 or less from among them onto the battlefield, or we can put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent we control that's either a creature or vehicle. So both modes are incredibly synergistic in our deck, and can help us find all these powerful 4 mana permanents. And we can also potentially find those with Storm the Festival, which is our curve topper of choice. A 6 mana sorcery it lets us look at the top 5 cards of our library, and then we can put up to 2 permanent cards with mana value 5 or less from among them onto the battlefield, and then can also be flashed back out of the graveyard for 10 mana. So Storm the Festival can find our powerful 4 and even 5 mana permanents, and then even finding lands with Storm the Festival is okay, as it will trigger landfall on our various cards, and by putting more lands in play it becomes easier to then flash back Storm the Festival out of the graveyard. And then looking at the rest of our deck, at 2 mana, we have the full playset of Emergent Sequence, which lets us search up a basic land and turn it into a creature, with plus 1 counters equal to the number of lands that enter the battlefield under our control this turn, so also counts as a modified creature for Kodama in case we get to attack with it. Then the full playset of Lotus Cobra as another way to generate extra mana with landfall, adding 1 mana of any color, especially powerful if we can put additional lands in play, whether it's with Storm the Festival or Evolving Wilds if we have multiple Cobras in play. And then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Scute Swarm, which can help us go wide by making copies of itself if we control 6 or more lands, something that Emergent Sequence can also potentially speed up. And then by going wide we can potentially leverage the Scute Swarm with a Felida Retreat by putting plus 1 counters on the entire team, which of course plays very well with Kodama as well. And then we also have two copies of Yasharn at 4 mana, a nice 4-4 creature that gets to search up a basic plains and forest when it enters, also prevents players from paying life or sacrificing non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. And then finally we've got our mana base, which consists of 26 lands, as we don't really want to miss any land drops in the deck. We've got our four copies of Evolving Wilds, which is great with any landfall cards, being able to trigger it twice. And then four copies of Overgrown Farmland as the true dual land in the deck. We're not playing any pathways, since we do need to leave enough room for basic lands to go with Kodama and Evolving Wilds. And the farmland's a little bit more useful, as we do need double white on some of our cards, as well as eventually triple green, so the actual mana fixing seems better than the untapped pathways in the early turns. And then we've got a few creature lands with two copies of Crawling Barons, which also has plus one plus one counter synergy with Kodama, and then one Cave of the Frost Dragon and one Lair of the Hydra as additional creature lands and mana sinks, and then one Aiganjo and one Boseju as a new channel lands that can also come in handy, and then six of each basic land. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Double sequence to ramp towards Storm the Festival. Maybe get a Felda Retreat in play on three. 
Although a black-white deck is going to have quite a few answers to our enchantments between cards like Vanishing Verse and uh, Rite of Oblivion. So we might want to wait until we get some immediate value. Aspirant pumps Adversary. Take three. Okay, so what are my options here? Could still go for retreats and hope it doesn't get removed right away. If I go for emergent sequence, that's all I can really do. Uh, Skewed Swarm, we probably want to wait until we can make a copy of it. Even though Meat Hook Massacre is a concern there. I guess the upside of going for Emergent Sequence is that we might be able to ramp into our Storm the Festival next turn, assuming there's no Meat Hook for two. Yeah, I guess that's worth a shot. And I think I'm okay attacking. It's gonna be Henrika. Okay. Makes each player sacrifice a creature, so we won't be able to play Storm the Festival just yet. But now I can follow the retreat and make a token. There might still be a Meat Hook Massacre in our future. Which could have been a reason to add counters instead, but Massacre for 3 would still kill the land here. So we're under quite a bit of pressure. Don't think I'm supposed to chump just yet. Alright, Vanishing Verse, as expected, deals with Retreat. But now we could maybe combo off with Storm the Festival. Or I can wait a turn, go Lotus Cobra plus Retreat, or I guess Retreat plus Cobra, probably better to make a token. And then next turn we'll have a Retreat in play as we cast Storm the Festival. If I play Skewed Swarm I could also make copies of it, but Meat Hook Massacre is still a very real concern. So yeah, maybe going for Storm the Festival is still worth it, in case we hit Wandering Emperor we can exile one of their creatures. That would be pretty good. All right, Emperor and Kodama. And this can minus on Henrika. And we'll leave the token back to protect our Planeswalker. So now if we can draw lands, we can keep going with our landfall synergies. Spellbinder gonna have a look. Goes for retreat. Another skewed swarm instead. Could try and get Fulda retreat in play plus on Kodama attack and then Kodama could also enable itself find a land trigger Fulda retreat. Or we could try and get skewed swarm going instead which I also don't mind. Plus, attack with both, and they could trade for the planes, but we would still trample over to get an extra land. And there's probably no need to play Cobra. Playing around the Massacre here again, even though they probably would have played it by now. Alright, Kodama down, sadly. And the wedding announcements. Alright, so our opponent's gonna go wide themselves. So now what's the plan? 
Fellow that retreats, play lands, pump my tokens. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, attack and then we can plus on the one day don't block. Remember your training. And then we'll keep the Cobra in hand. Since if they don't have me to massacre, they just lose. So no need to overextend. And yeah, there's a massacre as expected. The Dawn Sky is not bad. We're out of lands for Skewed Swarm, so I'm not going to play that one out just yet. But uh can play Cobra and Dawn Sky. And I'll make a Samurai. Hope Dawn Sky doesn't get exiled. It does, by right. So no death trigger, sadly. Could double block as well. And then we can make a token with the Emperor instead of having to minus on the adversary. How important is Lotus Cobra? We're sitting on 6, 7, 8. I guess a land would let us... Flashback Storm the Festival. So maybe this is better. Right, I guess it had to be an untapped land. So I'm fine cashing in the Emperor. I am almost sad to see you go. And then we'll make a token here. And then I could animate my Crawling Barons, but wouldn't be able to do it twice and don't want to trade for their token, so we'll just pass. Spider Queen can make a few spiders. And there's an Evolving Wilds, perfect. Make a token first. And then we can Storm and then maybe crack the Evolving Wilds after to get more Landfall Synergy. Getting Kodama and the Wandering Emperor. So... Can move to combats. All going probably face. Could send maybe one token at Spider Queen since Kodama will give a trample. So we can maybe trample over something like this. Okay, so I can fetch. Put encounters everywhere. And then no need to pump this token, but I can give one of the skewed swarms first strike. We've got the edge this Aren't I generous? Get more plus one counters. And that's going to be enough to now kill Spider Queen on two loyalty. You win this round, but I'll be waiting. And then we can try to put our creatures out of range of another Meat Hook Massacre. Uh, 
Okay, your turn. Massacre for four would still leave a bunch of five fives in play. And our opponent explodes. Oof, managed to go over the top against Black White. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a fine hand. No Kodama, but uh, some other good synergies. Up against Mono White Aggro. So on the draw against Mono White, it's going to be rough, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Probably want to start by ramping as opposed to going for Fledgling, so we can get a Yasharn in play early, which can maybe try and block. Although a turn to Aspirin is going to make that difficult. So let's play Cobra. There's also an argument for going with Emergent Sequence, which at least gets around Thalia, making it more expensive. But I think Cobra early not only potentially prevents the Aspirant from attacking, but could make even more mana in the future. Also plays well with the Emergent Sequence. Uh, Skyclave can exile it, that's one of the downsides. So we're already down to 12. Can keep up Iganjo here as opposed to going for Emergent Sequence. Might be our best bets. Opponents go to Sentinel. Grows the Apparition. Alright, so this could work out. We get to kill Apparition, make a 2 2 blocker, which can trade for the Aspirant. Opponent is going to boast. And then now Yasharn can try and stabilize us. And then next turn we can maybe go off with our Fletchling and Kodama. So yeah, our land put in a lot of work there. Opponent sends in the team. Opponent can boost. I think we still block Sentinel here over Usher. Although it's close, our opponent going wide could maybe get there, but we're about to make a bunch of blockers. Another Fledgling. So I could just play double Fledgling, play a land and pass, which I don't mind, and then next turn Kodama is looking good. Six mana for Adversary, which can now pump the team by two. Okay, that makes those tokens a lot more threatening. Opponent attacks. So I can eat a token, chum block, go to two. Or I can trade for Usher, double block a token, that seems better. Alright, so I'm probably not in a position to attack with a Fledgling, even though it would play well with Kodama. So instead, I guess play Kodama, play a land, and then we can emerge in sequence, making Fledgling a 4-4. And pass it back. And then we've got our creature lands to still leverage here. Adversary attacks alongside the token. They could have a Wandering Emperor here to give one of their creatures first strike. I think we would still put Kodama in front of Adversary, Fledgling in front of the token. They would probably save Adversary. We get to eat the token. And then, yeah, we can try and pressure the Emperor afterwards. Right, never mind, just a trade. That worked out. Another Fledgling. So we have a creature back in case of an Emperor making a 2 2 token. So I feel okay going on the beatdown plan here. Put 
opponent might be flooding a bit. Got more landfall coming up. And turn everything sideways. Let's see, this is 11 plus 6. Would be lethal. So shouldn't be at risk of dying to Wandering Emperor on the way back. Alright, so close game. Never really got to go off with Kodama, but the Fledgling still put in some work. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a potentially exciting start. Sadly missing white for Fledgling. So won't quite get to curve Fledgling into Kodama, but Sequence can find white mana, and we could always get lucky and draw planes. So I'll try it. Going on to red green, evolving wilds to draw. So I think we save the evolving wilds and just sequence here. And then next turn I could potentially play Kodama and just attack with my 2-2 land and get another one. Opponent Naya, so it could be the runes deck. Do they have a naturalist? Just a rune of sustenance on their land. Alright, so we get to potentially resolve Kodama and get an extra land. And then we probably want to hang on to Evolving Wilds. Get an extra planes. And then next turn I could maybe retreat plus Evolving Wilds or play Retreat and Fledgling. So do we see a champion? Just another rune. Alright, so opponent with a pretty tame start. Now we could follow the retreat, play a land, which would also give my land vigilance, so I can still play a fledgling second main. And then save the evolving wilds for next turn to add a whole bunch of counters. Yeah, I kinda like that idea. So retreat. Planes and counters and vigilance. Hit for seven. Getting two more lands, which can now make a bunch of tokens. And we're off to the races. Don't really expect any sweepers here. And then Evolving Wilds before attacking should seal the deal. And then we still have Boseju for interaction, just in case. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough, so yeah, with a good draw, we can sometimes overrun the runes deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty slow hand with no ramp. If we draw Kodama, then Fledgling into Kodama would be great. Don't think I can count on that, so we'll take a mulligan. This seems better. And then probably get a hope Cobra survives and go for Cobra into Yasharn into an early Storm the Festival. Although Blue Red's gonna have plenty of burn spells, including Spikefield Hazard. Well, still gonna play Cobra. Can be a play with fire instead. Can emergent sequence. Getting a forests. Can pay for jewelry disruption. And then now Yasharn can hit a few additional land drops. Assuming our land survives.
Prismari Command kills our forests. But they wouldn't be able to sacrifice their treasure with Yasharn in play, so that's nice. And then I'm assuming Wandering Emperor is better than Fledgling and Scute Swarm, which I don't really want to play without making a copy, even though Sweepers are a real possibility. So yeah, let's just play a land and then Wandering Emperor can play it now, pumping Yasharn, make it less likely they can burn it, or I can start making tokens. Ah, plusing seems fine. Don't have to play around Goldspan Dragon next turn. Otherwise we would hold Emperor to maybe minus. It's gonna be another iteration, but they've already played land, so a bit of an awkward sequencing. And yeah, I think Yasharn just messed their opponent up and kind of confused him a little bit, not being able to sacrifice that treasure. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Fledgling into Cobra plus Fledgling, or we can Cobra into Wandering Emperor. Shambling Ghast is annoying. Ooh, now that we drew Kodama, definitely liking Fledgling and hoping Shambling Ghast cannot take it out. And then next turn we can play Kodama and start flying over. Uh, I Twitch, I guess, gonna prevent that from happening. Times two. We would have still trampled over one Eye Twitch, I guess, so double Eye Twitch is the only thing that saved them. That's okay, so I guess we'll wait on Kodama. And then for now, what's the plan? Cobra, play land, play Merchant Sequence. Or I can play another Fledgling, play a land, but then I might be unable to grow them and have Kodama in play at the same time. And then now I might be able to attack with Fledgling. and get some environmental sciences, that's okay. Alright, so we get to play Kodama, potentially even attacking with the planes that can also search up a land. Although I don't have the land to give Fledgling flying. Still seems okay to play Kodama, attack with planes Fledgling, they might double block planes, take out Cobra, but then Fledgling still triggers. Alternatively, we can flash in Wandering Emperor, but we'll necessarily be able to uh, get past the Shambling Ghast without letting it trigger. So I think Kodama attack is probably fine. Could also just attack with Fledgling, but then let's see, active player, non-active player. I think we would trigger... This, then Shambling Gas triggers, so it gets to kill Fledgling before we get to put another counter on it. So let's try this. Opponent does go for the double block. By growing the Fledgling, we also play around potential Meat Hook Massacre, wiping the board by making our creature larger. So we'll see if they kill Cobra or make a treasure. Pun makes a treasure. And we have a backup Kodama ready to go in case they remove the first one. Alright, let's pass it back. Ooh, Path of Peril kills our Cobra and Fledgling. So... Now we're just gonna go Fledgling plus Sequence, or I can Emperor put a counter on Kodama, which also finds a land. I think I prefer that, actually. Run away. You'll be remember your training. All right, so we've got a 4-4 Kodama and an active Planeswalker. 
opponent passes, presumably with some instant speed removal at the ready. So now the plan might be to play Felidar Retreats, which can start making tokens and plays better around a potential sweeper. Or I can Fledgling into Emergence Sequence, which would also be okay. A little worse against another board wipe. Expecting Kodama to die. So I guess a backup Kodama could also be a fine play. Let's start by attacking. Don't think I'm playing Retreat here. Alright, Infernal Grasp works. So next turn they could Massacre for 3 potentially. I think I Emergence Sequence plus Kodama and then put Counter on Kodama. And then next turn retreats with a bit of a board presence is going to be more effective. It's going to be a tapped hive into the Celestis. Also have to watch out for blood on the snow since our opponent is playing snow covered swamps. Another Kodama. So now I can either Felda retreat plus fledgling or just Felda retreat, which seems slightly better. And then, probably still going to go for counters. Question is what to do with uh, Wandering Emperor. Could just make a 2-2 token. Since we already have counters on our current creatures. And attack. Then this one might want to make a token. And then the next one might want to add counters, or we can go for counters twice. What's the Meat Hook Massacre situation? They could play it for five. Yeah, maybe counters twice is actually better. So now they could Blood on the Snow. But then we still have our Emperor and Felda retreat. And some more creatures to refuel. So that's what happens. At least they had to use their treasure for it too. So Fledgling, Kodama, play a land, make a token. What to do with the Wandering Emperor? Um, they could now Massacre for 4 potentially. I guess that's another reason to go for counters with retreat instead. And then I can also put a counter on Kodama. Which would put it out of range. Is that the play? It's a little weak in the face of spot removal, perhaps. But it feels like if they had another Infernal Grasp we would have seen it. And then we would love to find a Storm of the Festival, for instance. Also don't have any creature lands, which would also come in handy in this control matchup. It's gonna be Shambling Ghasts into Henrika, which can make me sacrifice a creature. So goodbye, Fearless Fledgling. So slightly punished for not making a token. Cute Swarm's not bad. So I can play Cute Swarm and put a counter on it so it doesn't die to Shambling Ghasts. We've got the edge in this fight. Put on double blocks. Don't have to kill Shambling Ghasts, but then we also wouldn't get to grab a land with Kodama. 
So, yeah, that probably happens. So we might see another Blood on the Snow next turn. So I don't know if it matters what I do here. If they have a Meat Hook Massacre, they could play one for five, which is a reason to still add counters to Kodama. They can also Containment Breach to destroy Falada Retreat. Don't know if that's going to be enough to survive for them here. Alright, the Midnight Sky. That's fine. So now, if I plus Wandering Emperor on Kodama, they uh, pretty much have to block it, so the Scute Swarms can also attack. This triggers, gets back a creature, or makes me discard, although I can play another Wandering Emperor. What if I just plus on a Scute Swarm attack with everyone, then Wandering Emperor number two could add another counter somewhere. So that's maybe better. I've got new moves to teach you. All right, sweet. Managed to beat Mono Black, navigating past a whole bunch of sweepers from the control deck. So yeah, very happy with how this green-white landfall deck turned out. The synergy with Kodama is undeniable. So very happy how it slots into the archetype and get to combo off a few times with our Felda Retreat, which is always fun. So yeah, recommend the deck if you're into these green-white ramp decks. Certainly worth updating over some of the previous iterations. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.